live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, a very good morning to everybody. Thank you for joining us on our Sunrise Safari and we've got a nice surprise for you. My name is Cedric and of course behind the camera we've got the muscles and Paul. Alright, so we have located on Tortoise Pan a male leopard early on this morning. I heard him calling so I quickly came into the area and we found a beautiful male leopard called Tortoise Pan. But yeah, thank you so much for joining us on this stunning Sunrise Safari on a beautiful Sunday morning. And what a way to start our safari. Tortoise Pan, a big male leopard. And he's been calling, he's been salivating. And there's definitely another leopard in the area. Maybe Mawati, could be Marips, I'm not too sure. Okay, let's get going. But yes, joining us on this beautiful sunrise safari. On Wendy, we've got Steve and Panda. Down in the Eastern Cape, Amakala. We've got uh, Eric and Morgan. Our team in Johannesburg. Our directors is Jared and Gwen. And our amazing tech guru that side is Simba and uh, tech guru this side here at Juma is a Showmax. Alright, this is live, this is interactive so if you've got any comments or any questions that you want to send through to us this morning please make sure that you do register with us if you're watching on the Wild Earth app or the website and where did he go? Where did he go? I think he might just be behind us here. Sorry, we're just trying to locate him here quickly. I think he's already gone past. We'll find him now. We'll find him now. There he goes. Picasso, yes, it's going to be amazing. Especially that he's been calling, he's been salivating. So he's not happy with other another... Oh, there he runs. He's running. He's running. He's running. Sorry, I'm just trying to... Uh, I'm gonna catch him here. Oh. Yeah, he's right here. He was running. Oh, we're on Rebecca's road now. Oh, he's seeing something. He's seeing something. Sorry, I'm just gonna stop here. He's just at the base of this tree. As I said, he's been calling and salivating. Oh. Even could do alarm calling somewhere else as well. Uh, Steve, Steve. Steve, oh, Steve. Oh. I'm going to try and get hold of Steve to tell him there's a kudu alarm calling down Zoe's. Uh, yes, there's uh, there's Nongo coloring steam down Zoe's towards Philemon uh, uh, Cutline Junction. Watch how he sent marks now. I'm going to turn around and I'm going to spray. We just come on to Rebecca's. We just come on to Rebecca's. All right, let's move on. Oh, what a mission to stay with him. We found him actually on uh, Zoe's Viotilla Access calling, and all of a sudden we we're lucky just to pick up on him here. <coughs> Wonderful. What a way. What a start. And that other, maybe that other male might be, it might be Mulawati. Joshua, yes, thank you so much. Tortoise Pan, what a wonderful way to start. And you can see, he's looking into that direction. You can see that tail, look at his tail. <laughs> I love it when they do that with their tail. Almost like, looks like a, a scorpion's tail. And while they do that, sometimes you'll find when birds or something no takes notice of them, he's just putting his tail up there. He's like, yes, yes, you see me. I know. Let me just put my, my tail up there. There you go. You see me. Oh, wonderful. Yes. 
What a way, what a way to start. So he's scent marking everywhere. So it's funny enough, you came actually further east from where I usually see his tracks. He's more to the west, Zoe's. But he came, when he got to Zoe's, that's how he came a little bit further east and then he came south again. So almost like towards uh, Gallagher shortcut. Very strange, but I think because he's picked up on the other male leopard. And you can see how he's busy scent marking now quite, quite a bit. My result is you hope Marips is around. No, I hope Marips is not around because if Marips is around, that's not going to be good for, for Marips. Because remember, tortoise pan, is, tortoise pan is much bigger, older, more experienced. So, no, I don't know. I'm hoping Marips is not around. <laughs> Marips must rather just stay in the north. He doesn't want to confront this big male leopard. Not yet, not yet. As I say, Marips is not as big as tortoise pan. As Marips is coming on to four years old now. Tortoise pan is coming on to seven years old. Seven or eight? I think eight. Oh, no, seven or eight. One of those. So it's pre pretty much, it's pretty much half the, um, double the age of Marips. Watch his, watch his scent marks again. Spraying. Lovely. Picasso, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure TP and my Mawati's already had a few confrontations. We were saying that the other day. We, we only see them a very short period. We only see a very short uh, 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 glimpses of their, their, their lives and all that. We, you know, at night time, we don't, we don't, we, we're not out yet. And I'm sure they bump into each other once or twice. Not often, it's not going to be a, a common thing, but it, I'm sure it's happened before. Uh, not, I'm sure more than once. Um, they know each other. He's sent marking every single bush he's going past. He's not leaving one bush alone. He's just going past them and he's making sure that he's leaving his, his tortoise pan sent back, uh, uh, back at the bush. So, yeah. Oh, all right, let's go. <sighs> what a Sunday morning. What a start. Anna Maria, yeah, what a start for Sunday, fun day. He's not as he's not salivating as much as he was a little bit earlier on. And he's not calling as much as well. So I think the other male leopard tracks looked like went a little bit north here towards Gallego shortcut area. In other words, a little bit further north from where we are now. And then he turned straight south because we got him coming north and then he just turned south. his paws there we go all right let's move on and I think that uh, <coughs> that confrontation between Mulwati and uh, tortoise pan is gonna be yo oh, I want to be I want to be there when it happens um, I know it's it's it becomes quite hectic when you see it happening because uh, oh, sometimes it can end up fatal for one of them um, if they don't back down. Okay, oh, he's going into this thick stuff here now. Well, we'll have to try our utmost best to see if we can follow him, yeah? So I'm just letting Jared know. Right, let's try and get in there before we lose him. Get my <clears throat> mm. uh, that's gonna be tricky. Yeah, this is gonna be tricky. 
All right, let's go take a look at the weather today while we try and follow Tortoise Span. Good morning, everybody. Sorry about that. We've just been moving to follow up on some kudu alarm calling, as per Cedric. What a way to start the morning with a salivating male leopard. Well, we had a sunrise before that we were framing up. We've now managed to find another one. Hello, everybody. I'm Steve, joined by Panda on camera, and we're out and about here on the western side now to see if we could have found any sign of Mohawk and his boys coming in, but uh, there's no reports. There's no reports. I'm just going to list quietly a moment to hear if we can if we can hear any kudus shouting we saw tracks of another male leopard coming up now there was tracks of one coming from the west along for to access which one is which one darcy miller well there's no report we believe they might have gone west they're being chased by the kumbulas as per the radio just now but no reports of them coming in this direction i think yesterday's updates were a false hope Okay, Panda, I haven't heard anything, but let's go down. Let's go down here. We do have those tracks going up. But uh, I'm going to follow what Cedric said. The lob calls are often so much more reliable. These might have been the tracks of TP coming up, and those tracks might have been the other leopard coming in and then down. You never know. You never know. Alarm calls are always quite reliable. Our march to freedom is irreversible.
often the key is to find the animal, find the kudu, the impala, the monkey. Brace the kudu ears. Pretty quiet. Carry on. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another wet morning here in the Makala Private Game Reserve in the Eastern Cape, South Africa. I mean, you are here with us live as we're sitting with a herd of buffalo. Hello, 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 everybody. My name is Eric, joined by Morgan behind the camera. And together, we are going to be your eyes and ears this morning as we, well, we've already showed you herd of buffalo where there are a decent amount of little babies now as i said it is a wet morning here we are being dripped on so you may see a cloth just wiping the lens that's morgan just trying to clear the vision for you all right we're going to send you quickly to cedric All right, so we're still here with Tortoise Span. Oh, and he's still following him. He's going through very thick stuff now. Finally, we come into a little bit of a more of an open clearing here. And you can see he's just looking at something. Sorry, he's just behind a bush. And uh, he's still heading straight east towards a place called Philemon's Cut Line. But you can see he nose up, sniffing around. And he's just him. Yeah, sorry, I'm laugh. Yeah, um, he's just gone static now, but he's still going straight east. So not far from Philemon's cut line. Um, is, I'll let you know when we get uh, moving again. You give me a rev, I can actually hear your vehicle. Sorry, I do apologize. I'm just trying to get. No, you're directly east of us. Perfect. Perfect. Stay there. Well, just letting the other guy know exactly where we are. He might go lie down. Looks like he wants to lie down, maybe. No, he wants to move. Oh, well. He wants to maybe just have a little bit of a nap. Yeah. Leopard lover, yes, uh, I think so. TP is definitely um, more white. He's one of more white's bigger th uh, threat from the west, from the western side of more white's territory. From the southern side, the biggest threat for T uh, Mowati is Ngobotswan. You must remember, so it's just from the western side, yeah. Maybe he goes on top of this turmoil mound. He might go lie down. It looks like he, might, looks like he doesn't want to move again. Yeah, he wants to lie down. Yay. All right. Right, I have to try and get this other gentleman in this block. We're in the middle of a block here, and this block is not that easy. Um, let us move that side. Um, uh, Dion, he's just gone to Lala Pines now. I'm going to I'm going to turn my vehicle on. Try and you come, just come straight west. He's gone to Lala Pines, but come straight west into the block. I'm just going to turn my vehicle on. I just want to reposition here quickly, and you can pick up my audio.
How does it look? And pour a little bit more, eh? All right, did you get my audio there? Yeah, just come west. I'll, I'll, I'll guide you in. You directly. Yeah, come more like southwest. I would say. But anyway, yeah, come in. Yeah, you, but you directly east. I just heard you turning the car on. So I'm just trying to get this guy in here. Yo. <laughs> and as I say, he took us through some very, very thick stuff this morning, and luckily he's come to settle down now. Yeah, just come away, so straight away, so I've got your audio nasty from straight east of us. All right, well, we're going to try and get this other gentleman in here. Yeah? I think let's head over to Eric. I'm sure Tortoise Pan is not going to go anywhere else for the next few. So, yeah, let's head over to Eric in Amakala to see what's happening down there in the Eastern Cape. We are still sitting with our buffalo herd and they've now surrounded us. Some are feeding very close to the front of the car and some are giving us the stink eye. You can see that female over there. She's not impressed. She's got a little baby somewhere around here. Mm, where did, did you lose your baby now? Well, at least there was one following her. And she was sniffing and snorting, not very happy. They all seem to be very relaxed, though. It's just a couple that are investigating us a little bit, but then they're going back to their feeding. Gary, indeed, buffalo in the mist. Quite a, quite a sight to behold. can see some of the youngsters over there. Those guys would be probably about two, three years old now. And then we've got our newborns. And I've counted one, two, three. I think I counted six earlier. And these were all babies that would have been born this year. Most of them in January and beginning of February. They really are good. Look at those two little bubbas. So small. Haven't even got horns yet. Just these little, little, little bumps. Can you hear them feeding all around us? Pulling out the grass. I must say, these guys are very noisy eaters. Very, very noisy. Hello. <laughs> you come very close to the car. Sure. It really is a beautiful start to the morning.
this could well be to help a young, looks like a young male, could help, oh, this is a very small baby. This could help this baby perhaps go to the bathroom a bit easier. <laughs> oh, that is adorable. That baby only looks now like it's only just got the ha the handle of walking. So it's very possible it's about a week and a half old, maybe a week old. Stable, but still a little wobbly in places. As you can see, we are still here with uh, Tortoise Plan, this beautiful male leopard. He is still just uh, resting here in the grass, taking a little bit of a nap for the morning. I think he has been quite busy during the night time and earlier this morning, following my, another male leopard around the side. But yeah, now he's finally decided to come and relax here next to a termite mound. But the very interesting part about this is there, this termite mound looked like it is active with. Uh, Maybe a warthogs or something inside here. Yeah, there is a hole right on the side of the mound itself. And you can just see there. So sometimes you'll find leopards will actually have wait a bit. Maybe he can pick up on noises that's coming inside from this mound. Maybe there's warthogs that's busy shuffling around there. Maybe an art fog. You never know. Maybe even a porcupine. Not too sure. But he's still very much aware of what's happening around him. It's so nice just to kind of follow him in this block now because we always, many times it comes from Zoe's, he'll come into this block towards another road called Philemon's Cut Line and uh, to get through this block to find him on foot, it's difficult. So I'm so glad that we could at least follow him and or find him this morning before he came into the block. <coughs> Excuse me. Because here's another vehicle that's with us, so you'll hear other voices and another vehicle moving around. There's a hyena coming. There's a hyena coming as well, so that's exactly what's grabbed his attention now. I'm sure this hyena, we can't, it's just behind the vehicle, it's very difficult for us to really see it, or for us to put the camera on it, but we'll see what this hyena is going to do picked up on the scent of this leopard. Sometimes hyenas will actually follow vehicles into into the block. They'll make very clever. And you'll find that the hyenas know, okay, well if there's vehicles inside of this uh, inside of the bush it might be something that those vehicles are busy following. They're very clever with that. And now it's gonna come here, it's gonna come in and investigate. Because tortoise pan is not going to do too much because there is no kill yet. So you'll find that eventually that Sahina will decide to just uh, move on. Okay, the vehicle's just going to quickly give us another vehicle. Uh, a, uh, what he's just doing now, the gentleman, he's just quickly revving the vehicle just to see, um, to let the other guys know where we are. So there is another vehicle that's going to try and get into the sighting. All right, so this hyena slowly but surely looks like Mbilu. <coughs> yeah, it's Mbilu. There's a hyena known as Mbilu. We can't really see it yet. Uh, mm -mm, still, uh, the aerial's in the way. So it's just still behind, the, behind Rusty. Tortoise Pan is not too bothered about about the hyena's presence.
Betty, no, uh, Mawati is three years older than Tortoise Pan. So Mawati is three years older, so more experienced, but Tortoise Pan is also obese. He's not tall. Yeah, you know, Tortoise Pan is not a tall leopard, but he's bulky. He reminds me, as, as I said, from Vula, Hukamuri, those other uh, leopards that used to be uh, where uh, Mawati reminds me of Imsahwen. Beautiful male leopard called Imsahwen, tall. Here comes Ayina now. <laughs> so I'm busy growling at it now. Ayina uh, sees him. So 50, it was uh, it was a quite a tricky situation getting through some of these drainage lines. Trust me, it wasn't easy. Uh, it's not in Bili, so I thought it was in Bili, but it's not. Oh, my apologies. I'm trying to see, it might be one of the immigrant males. I would love to show the hyena, but as I say, it's still just behind the aerial. It's not not feasible for us to pan the camera over to the hyena. Ah, it's yeah, it's moving on. It's amazing how this leopard just kind of disappears in the grass. So so well camouflaged. Sorry, these are other vehicles. Uh, I apologize for sometimes the people leave their phones on. Darcy Miller, yes, it's always, always nice, even if they're sleeping, it's just to see a leopard, it's always funny. Oh, you can see the hyena now straight ahead of us. Sorry, I'm just going to let them pour. No, there we go. This is the hyena that is, has been, uh, could be, uh, oh, there's other hyenas calling further south of us now. Could be Koa, eh? No, it's not Koa. My apologies, not Koa that at all. I'm going to have. beat myself up about that uh, idea on that hyena, I can see it. So, so, so TP is, the tortoise pan is seven and a half years old. Oh, he's going to follow that. Oh, he's going to follow that. Ngwazi, I always get Ngwazi wrong. Always Ngwazi, that's it, thank you. Alright, looks like I'm gonna follow. Let's go. Alright, let's try and get out here. I don't know what he's picked up on. Oh, now we are, here we go again. Are you ready, Paul? Here we go again. Watch your head. Okay, we've got a nice little pathway here. That's nice. That's nice. Oh. Mm. Yes, so this hyena is busy. F uh, the leopard is following the hyena now. That's very interesting. I think maybe he's thinking, mm, maybe they're calling for something this side. Maybe there might be something happening a little bit further south. You never know. But let's go take a look. Oof. I'd like to. Oh, I'm going to just stop here. Eh? You see how he's following us. So he's just picking up on that hyena. Yes, Harry, it's amazing that they've got no fear. They just want they just want to be here to try and uh, oh oh he's running after something there. Oh he's running after something there. Wow. Ah. Alright, I don't know. It'll look like a little steenbok. Oh 
Ah. We're going to just try and follow. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's gone now. I think it went this way. I'm going to follow you. Yeah. It's just chaos. <laughs> it's just chaos. There's other vehicles here and all that. Uh, but he ran off to a stenbook. No. Where he is? Oh, there he is. I've got him. I've seen 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 him. It's just, yeah, I don't know why that guy's going that way. He should have gone this way. Bye. I don't think he caught it. I don't think he caught this den block. Oh, look at this. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Paul, look at that. No, just wait. Just wait, uh, Jared. We've got a beautiful scene here. Sorry, I've just got a beautiful scene here. And there's, as you can see, on this marula tree. Maybe you'll go up this fallen over marula. Oh, so he missed the den block. <laughs> That's. And Stenbock went running. Oh, go up. Go up, go up, please. There we go, there we go. Johnny, very handsome. Very handsome. Very handsome fellow, Johnny. Hey, my boy. Um, four, four, four. Sorry. Sorry, I was just letting that guy know he comes right directly into the in frame there. Mm. <laughs> Now using, of course, these fallen over trees, just to elevate themselves, just to, to take a look around. There's Laura Cam. Oh. A little bit. Yeah, I'm just going to wait for all these. All right, he's going. <coughs> he's coming. He's coming down. <sighs> All right, uh, I don't know, Jared. Let's. Uh, you want to go to Eric? We can more welcome because it's just, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. A nice workout for the morning. <laughs> uh, I feel like oh yeah, he's actually coming right here now. Oh, he's actually coming towards us. Well, oh, that's nice. Hello. Yeah. Hi, my boy.
Doesn't look like they're heading anywhere in particular. I think they're just grazing. They haven't been in this area for quite some time. Uh, I'm not too sure. Well, I'm sure there's lots of grass for them here as they haven't really been very many bulk grazers this side. Do buffalo? Uh, not necessarily, no. Lots of birds here, making their presence known as well. We had a very strange flock of birds, actually, not too long ago. It was maybe three or four flocks of birds that came tearing over us. Didn't, ma didn't manage to see what they were, but they were in a massive flock. It almost like a, a swarm of bees they came. Some of these buffalo got a bit of a fright because they also came in fairly quickly. Buffalo tomorrow, technically not. Buffalo will, uh, there'll be like a group of elders, the older females collectively will make a decision to move somewhere as well as <coughs> the, sorry, the bulls as well. But you normally actually find the males don't really care where the buffalo herd goes. As long as he has access to the females, and he can push away the other bulls. They don't really, don't really mind. Um, I've seen an, um, a number of different females leading the charge in the specific directions for food and for water, but I haven't seen one in particular. So I feel I don't really have matriarchs. Sure, there's some buffalo in the very far distance. He's slowly starting to move. Uh, just above the buffalo in the middle, there were two that were moving towards that uh, water hole, but they've gone now. We're going to send you back up to Cedric and I think his leopard that he's managed to relocate. Yeah, unfortunately, it's he's passing the vehicle already. All right, so he's going back into the thickets. We had him nicely in the open here now, but uh, he's going straight back into the bush. All right, let's carry on. We'll carry on following. Oh. They're going to go through there. I'm going to go around, let them do the hard work through the bush. I think I'm going to just go onto, onto Shibamu Road, a road that's just here, and I'm going to wait on that side. Easier that way, then we can get a nice walk by.
Itzy, yes, thanks. Uh, look, you know, unfortunately, you know, one thing that comes with uh, so a lot of the experience and all that, you know, we, you try and work and give that animal that space and also work out your little route plan. Uh, and I always say, we don't want to alter that animal's behavior. You know, you don't want to change it. And you rather want to kind of give it that, that a little bit of, you know, that respect. And I always believe in that. So I'd rather maybe come and wait here now, wait for these guys, let them try and get through the bush with uh, that leopard and I will just wait around here. Yeah, because I know he usually will come past here, yeah, he might pop out on this side here. Yeah. Because he's going to come straight to that tree, this tree here. Yeah. He'll send Mark against that tree and then he'll come out to this corner. Alright, let's see. Oh, it's going to take a bit of time, Jared. It's going to take maybe 10 minutes for him to pop out here, but rather let's just hang back a bit. I'm just going to do this. I'll usually come out on the... Uh, uh, it's actually not... <laughs> I can see the vehicle right here. It's not too far, actually. I thought maybe... To, you got him? Is he coming? Oh, here he comes. That's nice. All right, well, let me go just turn because I've got the aerial in the way. Sorry, my apologies. I think I'll just try my utmost to not change his direction, yeah? Oh. Oh. Uh, sorry about... Yeah, no, no, TP is in... Uh, Vincent, TP is in his territory. This is, uh, this is TP's territory. So uh, this is his uh, this is his typical route coming onto Shabamu, going straight down. He's going to cross over Gary Main into Little Gary. So this is his typical typical route. So yeah, this is his territory. This is also Mawati's territory. This is TP's furthest eastern boundary of uh, eastern boundary of his territory. This is Mawati's furthest western boundary of Mawati's territory. Uh, I just want to see here he comes. Um, we might actually, sorry, I'm just taking a look here, I just want to try and keep my eyeballs on him. Uh, yeah, I think we're in the wrong position here, I'm poor. Yeah, I feel like I'm in the wrong position here. Alright, let's, sorry. My apologies. Let's just go there, I'm going to turn there, I'm poor. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting on Shabamu, yeah. Yeah, I've got your guys visual. So I'm just going to turn here quickly. La di di, la da da. Anna Marie, yes, yeah, so nice to spend so much time with them. All right, let's hang here. Just stay with us for a little bit, Jared. You never know. I've got a feeling he's going to pop out on the road here for us. And he'll give us one nice little walk by. Let's see. I just want to see what he's in. Uh, Dion, have you still got him there? Looking around here, can't come close. All right. I'm just, I'm just to the southeast of you guys on the Shabami. So I'm just going to hang back here and see if I can get him coming down towards us. Right, here he comes. Well, we don't see him, but he'll come out. He'll pop out on the bush from the thickets, from the left hand side. He'll jump onto this road and he's going to come straight down towards the vehicle. I told him he needs to do that this morning. Yeah, we're just uh, live here, so we're just going to quickly get one walk by, a nice one. Uh, by himself here, yeah, coming down the road, if you don't mind. But yeah, as I say, he definitely had some, uh, yeah, uh, I can say, interaction with another male this morning, the way he was going. Because early this morning, we heard him calling, uh, just before we did checks, and I stood at the f uh, fence at our camp, and I heard again, I told him, Paul, let's go. I think I know exactly where he is, and we went and... Oh, 
Did you guys try to cross? Ah, okay. So I should be coming on to you. And then, yeah, we went to go and quickly have a little squizzle there, and I stopped. Oof. Here he comes, yeah, here he comes guys, uh, Jared, here he comes, he's coming down the road, as you can see there, he pops out for us, wonderful, we get a nice little walk by of this beautiful male leopard. Uh, just hang back a little. If you are a driven nature enthusiast with a background in communications, then this message is for you. Wild Earth is calling for volunteers to moderate our web and social media chat platforms during our live broadcast. Do you keep up with the latest trends on social media? Do you have quick fingers and a sharp eye? Then we're looking for you. To apply, email your CV to us at jobs at wildearth.tv. Join the Wild Earth team today. Wild Earth, connecting with nature. Hello everybody and good morning. We are we are still here. TP's been stealing the show this morning. What a champion. What wonderful scenes. It sounds like. Nice work, Cedric. Nice work. Sounds like Tortoise Pan is on his way south on his usual route out of Juma. And we're just checking a road that seems like it hasn't been checked in a few days. We've been scratching around a bit. We had a hyena for a moment. Didn't get identification of it. Other than that, it's been pretty quiet. We're just slowly heading east now. Happy Sunday, everybody. Set to be a gorgeous day. Alexis, I'm not sure. Panda, did you have a cheetah here last year? Yeah, I had it. Was you did, eh? Yeah, I think it's mid, mid last year. Mid of last year, Panda reckons he had a cheetah. 
every now and again Alexis they pop up it's just it's just like that they pop up and then they're gone again um, you never know I mean there's always a potential to have a cheetah on this property they just don't seem to stick around for very long um, over the last what six years I've probably had five five different uh, cheetah groups um, one day we even had a, a female and a two youngsters or sub adults on quarantine for about three drives which was open area close to camp which was magical that was really special but uh, they do come and go uh, we just don't really have the preferred habitat for them we don't have the open areas that they like it's it's quite densely vegetated for the most part so they prefer the open areas up in Bovelsuk and uh, open areas maybe towards the east into Kruger but they don't do very well in an area with high pressure of hyena and uh, leopard and lion which um, you've probably noticed we we have cheetah being a very docile predator in comparison they do very well in areas of open country and low density of before mentioned predators You never know, maybe today's the day we get a cheetah on camera. I'll tell you, the radio will go crazy if we do call in a cheetah. Shkunk in uh, the local dialect. <laughs> uh, the radio will go crazy. Should I, should I say it just to see? Just to see how everybody responds. I'm only joking, I won't do that. Good morning, stations. We've got uh, five cheetah here on the. <laughs> It will be crazy. It'll be cra People will just forget what they're doing. They'll forget to talk to their guests. They'll forget that they're even on a game drive. They'll just forget everything. Ah, cheetah. Let's just go. Middle of an amazing sighting. We're going. Oh. I just got a bit of a, a branch block here. We're just going to move it out the way. Red bush willow branch been broken. Very heavy. Angela, I mean, the, the type of grass is influenced by the soil, and uh, nutrient rich soils produce uh, pretty nutrient rich grasses. Uh, sandy, well drained soils don't produce as good grasses. So, you know, it's not necessarily the, the type of grass, but the type of habitat really that uh, will dictate what animals you'll find there example you go to the Mara and it's all basalt soil and it's just fields fields and fields and fields of red oat grass and the like which is very nutrient rich very palatable and that gives rise to the migration to hundreds of thousands if not a million or two animals moving but here in Juma, we do have pockets of basalt soil or clay soil, which is generally the low-lying areas where they've been deposited on the landscape. And then higher up on the landscape, the, the vegetation is a little bit more sparse. So it's the habitat, really, the density of the trees and the grasses that um, certain animals would prefer. Some like it to be open, some like it to be medium, some like it to be dense, some like the transition. So different habitat types provide different plants and uh, those in turn with the habitat type attract different species okay well this road is pretty quiet, apart from a log in the road. But Eric has been having a wonderful morning. Let's go check in with him once more.
also quite quiet now. We've moved away from our buffer to come in search for our three amigos. So we're starting our search party here. I've just seen two kudus run over this sort of hillside. They weren't interested in stopping. Now, you can sort of see our atmosphere fairly misty in the distance over there, and that's fairly close to where we stay. Uh, the rain has halted for now. Don't know how much longer we're going to sit without the rain, but it's quite nice. It's lovely. It's it's not cold. It's not very windy. Oh, there's a secretary bird. Do you see it right in front of us? I think he's going to come round the bush there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And he's also doing a bit of a, a sprint this morning. Oh, a jog. Oh, come on. There he is. A bit far away. Also on the move. I wonder what that bird saw. It's made it run like this. Because it's a very fast way of covering ground, making sure that you get something. As he will be patrolling for all sorts of snakes, rodents, birds, reptiles, anything really that is big enough to go down the throat of a secretary bird. Excuse me, my stomach is very hungry this morning and I'm growling like a lion. Gonna be scaring animals away with that sound. Now, I know that our three amigos were in this area yesterday, and I overheard somebody talking about them. But whether they've moved is a mystery. But we will soon get to the bottom of. Now. I'm talking about how it's lovely and not misty and it's mist slowly, slowly <laughs> rolling in behind us. But that's fine. It just makes the atmosphere look even better. Lisa, that's a very good question. You know, I don't know to my knowledge Oh, there's another one. I don't know to my knowledge if there is anything that would prey on a secretary bird. You know, obviously, I mean, a lion may chase it, a cheetah may chase it, but, you know, they're going to be wise about it. It's a big bird of prey. It's dangerous. Um, I would say no. But, you know, in the wild, <laughs> anything is possible. But to my knowledge, I think they are almost also at the top of the food chain. Now, I think only big cats may go for them, but they wouldn't make a, 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 an effort, you know, to purposely chase down a secretary bird. I'd also hate to be chased by a secretary bird. Because, well, they look like they can cover some speed with those two very long legs that they have. But then they also fly as well. And they've got these talons and a very, very big beak. And it just seems like a, a, lot, of, a lot of trouble. So I would advise maybe not annoying secretary birds. <laughs> Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. Daylight saving time for the US and Europe has arrived. The 10th of March will see the US shift an hour forward. And the 31st of March will see Europe and the UK also shift an hour forward. Stay connected to nature from wherever you are in the world. Go to our website to find out more. Don't miss a moment with Wild Earth. Thank you. 
Right, so I'm just going to try and get rid of this hairy caterpillar that was on my dashboard here. Yeah? As you can see, it's something that I don't want it to keep on crawling around here yeah, on the vehicle. But isn't that nice? Look at that. All right, I'm going to just release him here quickly in the bush. All right, here we go. Yeah, it's, it's a very big caterpillar here. A very big caterpillar. Here we go. Here we go. Free to munch on some little f leaves and that. There we go. Bye bye. All right. That's nice. Yeah, it's nice there, but as long as it's not nice when it's on us, it's not going to be pleasant. I've had one before. I've had a hairy caterpillar falling down my shirt the one day many years ago. And I thought it was just a leaf in it, and I'm like, knocked it all out. Actually, not many years, it was about three years ago. And well, the next moment, I've got this huge burning sensation on my skin. It felt like someone, you know, putting an iron on my skin. And I'm like, I realized what it was. I took my shirt off, and I saw this hairy caterpillar, all squashed, but all the hairs were in, in my skin. And uh, I got back to the camp, and the guy said, yeah, use cold water, try and get rid of it. They had to use creams and um, all different kind of creams to kind of get rid of that, that burning sensation. And it just stayed there all the time. Eventually, I was going crazy. After about maybe two hours later, I was like, I was just, uh, I just had enough of it. And then one of the maintenance guys there, a local guy, he said, Cedric, go to the Boma where we had the boma last night. There's a, the ash heap there. Grab some of the ash and just uh, put a little bit of water with the ash. Make a nice little paste out of the ash and then smear it on, that, on the spot where it's burning. So I went to go and do it, grabbed ash, I went to my room, made the paste and then I made this kind of uh, a smear on top of my body where the burning sensation was. I smeared all the ash all over the show. I tell you, it was not even two minutes later. Two minutes later, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. And I'm like, okay, maybe it's just for a little bit. I waited. Still nothing. Perfect. It worked 100%. And after that, went for a shower and all that, and I was good to go. So I just neutralized uh, the toxins or the... the um, yeah, all the toxins from the from the hairs. So yes, it was amazing. So yes, use ash if you get uh, pretty much uh, hairy caterpillar hairs all over you, and you're getting like a, an irritation out of it. Grab ash. Yes. All right. <coughs> Let's go and look for something else. I'm going to head to the northern areas. I'm going to head to uh, where we had the other male leopard tracks, going up onto Gallego shortcut. I'm going to try and follow up on that and see if we're going to get lucky there. Oh, bag. The bag nest, bag nest moth. Oh, so that caterpillar uh, changes into a bag nest moth. Okay, it's like the bagworm. Yes, yeah, so there's bagworms and all that. Okay, all right, all right. Interesting, interesting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that information on what the caterpillar morphs into. Bag nest moth. Well, what a morning. What a morning. Beautiful. What a start to a Sunday. Can't ask for any better start than this. And it hopefully it continues. It continues. Mm. Right. Well, we're going to continue to try and get to that area where we had the other male leopard tracks heading north. So let's head over to Steve. Nice work, setters. Watch out for those hairy caterpillars. They can be quite uncomfortable. I have seen the rashes that they can cause. Learn pretty quickly though to stay away. <laughs> or you'll learn again and again until you learn. 
So we've uh, just checked our eastern side and we're about to arrive at Buvelsuk Dam. See if anything's happening on that side. I have a feeling we might find some hippos. What else do you reckon, Panda? Maybe a grey heron, that's a good call. We, we might actually see our Malachite Kingfisher again. Should be quite nice. And even, I reckon, a thick me. Okay, I'm in a moment. And we'll bask upon the views of Bivalsuk. Just noticing the water levels at our watering hole dropping quite substantially over this last week and a half, two weeks since I've been here. We haven't had much rain. Aha. So everybody, it's World Wildlife Appreciation Day. Join myself and Sedders this evening as we'll answer questions about the wildlife species of your choice. That'll be uh, 7 o'clock, I believe, this evening. Half an hour after show. So check in there. Yeah, thanks so much, Jim, the, uh Hello hippos. It's always nice to scan around these water points. You never know, there might be something just sitting up on the bank. Something just taking it easy. Kendra, this is a savanna biome. The whole northeast of South Africa is savanna, which is, means it's comprised of a, a medium to low rainfall, not high, and uh, it's comprised of, and summer rainfall is comprised of components of trees and grasses. We get uh, the low felt, which is more than nutrient rich. <laughs> nutrient rich biome, although that does have a gradient shift with the geology from north to south and east to west. There's some shifts in how the nutrients are laid on the landscape versus the more sweeter, oh, sorry, the more um, sour felt in the mountains where we get higher rainfall. So the more rainfall you get, the more leached the soil becomes and the less nutrients and the lower the rainfall, the less it gets leached and more nutrients, like a sieve. So a biome everybody, if you're not sure what it is, it's a broad ecological unit, vegetation unit, comprised of the same vegetation falling into the same climate geology can vary the habitat types within the biome but climate is important how much rainfall what time of year and what does the vegetation look like forests for example are all year rainfall and they are comprised of a dominance in tall trees high rainfall and all year round the Fainbos biome down in the Cape is a winter rainfall biome and that ranges from from medium to high rainfall as well you go just over the mountains into what's known as the succulent Karoo that is a low rainfall winter so a very different environment created because of the changes in rainfall and what time of year 
Okay, well, it sounds like Eric has caught up with the three amigos. Let's quickly send you over to them. We have found these, well, someone else has found these three amigos. We've just jumped on the ship with them. And they seem to be lying out in the open in this very strange, strange weather. I can see that one grooming very, very camouflaged in there. You can just see the head moving up and down, up and down as he grooms himself. Not too sure if this is the area where they were seen yesterday, but I know it, it's still along a sort of the same road. They generally, well, not always, but most of the time, they are somewhat closer to, there's some stumps and uh, some fallen, well, not fallen down, cut down, eucalyptus trees that they're normally hanging around because they'll scent mark on them and they'll climb up them, you know. Sort of have a little bit of fun in and around them. It's the yay, yeah, indeed, yes. It's the three amigos. And uh, they, well, we can only see one of the amigos. It does look like they've been sitting out in the rain, getting all sopping wet. All right, we're going to send you to Cedric quickly. All right, we got a tortoise panda guy, and so we eventually came back to the area because he's still hanging around here on Juma. He just had a, a drink of water now. And we can see now he's just busy scent marking against one of the bushes. Well, yeah, he's going now straight south. He's going to go past... Uh, Paul, we might actually just try and reposition him, Paul. Now he's going further that way. Let's see if we can get out here. Let me know, um, Paul. I'm going to try and go all the way around because it's the only way we're going to do this. Are you ready, um, Paul? All right. I'm <laughs> we're going to do this in reverse. <laughs> <laughs> do apologize, but yeah, we just, uh, anyway, we're going to try and get uh, a nice little view of him. Uh, uh, he's going to come down. Let's see. Oh, I'm, I'm taking a huge, a huge gamble here at the moment because there's an animal pathway that comes past this pan. And I want to see if he's going to come straight to this pan or just come right past it. Because apparently he just had a drink. Nothing I see. Do you see him? Oh no. Did you know that the only group of birds that can fly backwards are hummingbirds? We are celebrating World Wildlife Appreciation Day with a tell-all. Send Cedric and Steve questions about any wildlife species of your choosing in this Wildlife Ask Me Anything. Learn amazing new facts and brush up on your knowledge about all things wild. Become an explorer and watch it live on the app. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
It's somewhere in the bush. Yeah. Oh, it's under the tree. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. uh, I got you. Got to love it. It just shows you. How, uh, can you see anything, Paul, from your side? I want to see if Paul's got. Uh, um, some, I think he's gone directly under. Oh, he's gonna be maybe under that tree there. Oh, hey. No. I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> okay, let's see who's got a sharp eye here. Paul, you ready? Yeah. If you see him before me, then I will make you a cup of coffee when we get back to camp. How about that? It will be, he'll be in the shade somewhere. But where in the shade? That's the question. You got him? Oh, all right, so Paul, you're making me a cup of coffee then. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, oh, there we go. <sighs> well done, and Paul. Cedric, Cedric. Mm. Sorry, is this live here? Yeah? Uh, standing by? Yeah, it's still Lala. Yeah, he's, he's Lala in the shade, shady spot here at this pan. Uh, 100%. Blue Jay fly, yeah, no, look, I think at the end of the day, you know, it's, uh, <sighs> DP is giving us a run around. But luckily, luckily for now, that he's going to settle down as well, is that the, a lot of the vehicles have seen him and they're all moving out now. So, we're practically, practically almost getting a little bit of, um, how can I say, quality time with him. This is beautiful at this pan. But you can, I can understand. Now, talking about, I got so excited a little bit earlier talking about salivation and all that, and he was salivating quite a bit this morning. So, why do leopards salivate? Well, the big reason why leopards uh, do salivate, so like tortoise pan, I think this male leopard picked up on another male leopard's uh, scent, as well as just not just the scent, sometimes you'll find that if another male starts calling close to where he is and, and he moves, and he moves pretty, oh, there's a hyena there. Uh, hyena's just arrived as well. You can see how hyena's just walking by, trying to pick up on where did he go. And then, of course, they'll start salivating, and especially when they start um, when they start competing against one another. And if he wants to try and tell the other male, "Listen, I am here. This is my territory," and they get kind of all worked up. And when they get worked up like that, that's when they start salivating. Not just males, females as well. So females against females, males against males. So that's when they start salivating. That's how when you see a leopard salivating, you know that there might be another individual in that area. That. Uh, and that's why that that one and all that individual is busy salivating. So yeah, salivation. But now he's very relaxed. You can see he's not too bothered. No, William. No, males won't salivate over females. No, uh, the salivation will be male, male, female, female. It's more about uh, you know. <laughs> Oh, no, you know, all worked up. You're not going to come into my territory. This is my territory. This is my area. You know, so and they start salivating. Okay, you can see he's just listening out. I mean, that uh, hyena went straight past, trying to figure out where did that leopard go? Where did he go? He's very, very relaxed. Uh, Ro Roxanne tortoise pan. No, he had one. He had a female uh, litter mate, and she died 
very very much early on when she was born. So I get a sister, and she died pretty much late 2016. And he was born. Well, they both were born, of course, around about July August 2016. So she died early on. And he hasn't got any litter mates. Nope. All by himself. And he comes from Londolozi. So if you don't know if Tortoise Pan, he comes from an area called Londolozi. His mother was uh, a beautiful female. I've never seen her before. I've seen pictures of her. And Zanzani female. And then his father, possibly they say it was the Nyantini uh, male. And, that, and that's where you got, got the name Tortoise Pan. And Tortoise Pan is an area in Londolozi where he was seen quite often. And he's still got this hyena. I don't know which hyena that is. I'm just going to quickly get my binoculars out. I just want to see which hyena is just trying to... Is it still in Gwazi, looks like it, eh? No, is it in Gwazi? Difficult to see there. So just going behind. Hey, boy, you're not... Uh, yeah, you're just listening out to that hyenas. Those hyenas pester you the whole day. You can see not a not a not a happy look <laughs> when he sees hyenas. Anyway, let's head over to uh, Eric. We've got our cheetahs and they're grooming each other. I did say beginning of our sunrise safari our sunless sunrise safari um that there there had been a bit of rain um and i think still some rain to expect and these guys have been obviously lying out in the open and they are now grooming each other just trying to dry each other off because i can't imagine it must be comfortable to be all wet like this having wet fur non-stop but also the grass is very wet so I imagine they've also got some very warm patches, some maybe dry patches there. It's probably why they don't want to move too far, but they're very camouflaged there. You know, and we, we always, we always talk about it. Like if you're walking around here, you're not seeing these, these cheetah <laughs> until it's too late. <laughs> Mind you, they'll probably hear you and see you coming before you see them. Oh, they're standing up now. All right, so AfriCam shows starting after our morning drive at 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. That is the first show, and that is sight and sound of Africam. So that's listening to the to the sounds of the animals down at the dam, and li also looking at them. And the second show will start at 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., and that is the live waterhole where there will be commentary. This will start immediately after our sunrise safari so please do tune in Cooks the <laughs> These guys have done it again. They really have. And you know this is this is how they this is how cheetahs survive, you know, out in the wild. In areas where there may be more lions than what we have. They just lie flat in the grass. And this is also how they end up catching a lot of their prey as well. By giving it the fright of their life as it gets stumbled upon. And uh, then they leap up and chase it. 
I think it's the perfect, the perfect hunting ability. Well, no, ability is the wrong word. The perfect hunting strategy. There you go. Strategy. It's a perfect strategy for that. Now, there is a little bit of a breeze starting to kick up. Well, not too much of a breeze. Very gentle. Oh, there we go. We've got some heads grooming each other. Xavier, when they do mate, yes, it is possible that all three males will mate with the female. And uh, it's a pretty cool thing, you know, with cheetahs and uh, leopard. It's with leopard, it's a little bit unlikely that a female will mate with another male. Um, mostly they'll mate with one male and then they'll, they'll be done with it. But with cheetah, um, but it, it, it is possible with leopards that uh, two fathers can be far, there can be multiple fathers in a litter. So that means, say for instance, a female has four cubs. It's possible that each of these male cheetahs can father a cub, and one of them could maybe father two. Uh, the same with le with female leopards. It's possible that she could mate with two two different males, have two cubs, and those cubs could have two different genes. Uh, one could have one from another male, and one could have one from the other. So it is possible uh, that all three of them will mate. Better is more than a word to us. It's a commitment to conserve our nation's precious landscapes, oceans, and wildlife. It's more sustainable fishing and farming practices, jobs and prosperity for our communities, and access to clean drinking water for all. Better is believing that together we can make a difference. For nature and for you.
his ears are always working. So yes, it can be sleeping, but they don't go into like a deep sleep like we do. You know, I find most animals, they'll sleep, but they'll be in a, like a semi-conscious state. Those ears are still moving. So if there's something approaching them, rustling through the grass, you'll find that he'll pick up on that sound very quickly. Or if he picks up on a smell, a scent of something that's coming closer to him, he'll and then he'll quickly try and investigate. But other than that, he's going to try and take a little cat nap for the morning. Right, while well, we are going to just sit here with old Sleepy TP. <laughs> Sleepy TP. Let's head over to Steve as he's doing some birding. Hmm, nice one, Sitters. Well, I think you're at the pan where we had a hyena earlier. The one on the bottom of Shabamu Road. I don't know who that hyena was. We didn't get an ID, but we're here. There we go. Wahlberg's eagle. Busy calling, calling, calling. That's coming back. Looking into a bit of aerial display over there. Let's see if it's trying to go up. Make you work, Panda. <laughs> now most people struggle to identify Warburgs as a Warburgs when they are flying low like that. You can clearly see it's going in a circle. Most people will characteristically identify Warburgs because of the, the thin ruler-like tail when they are high in the sky. But uh, when they're trying to get lift like this, they fan their tail out like a typical bird of prey so as to get lift. So you'll often see a Warburg that's in low altitude, doesn't have the narrow straight ruler-like tail, which would be characteristic in flight. And very typically finding them in this tree over here, but he doesn't want to play around with us much longer. Holy migratory birds will start going by the end of this month, maybe into April. It depends on the food resource. You know, if the, if the rains come and we get another bloom of insects, a lot of our birds might stay. But uh, if we don't get any more rain and the food resource starts to diminish, the birds are going to have to leave early. Um, it is a seasonal thing, so we'll see. It's the same as them arriving. It's all about the food. Okay, well, let's carry on, Panda. That bird looks like it went over towards Gary Dam. I wonder if it's going to go have a drink. But um, I've had it often here, and I haven't seen the female. Timothy, I've never seen an eagle hover. Um, the black-shouldered kite or the black-winged kite is able to, to hover almost. They sort of flap their wings backwards and forward. But uh, there's no other large bird that's able to do that. The pied kingfisher um, is another one. They're able to forage quite out deep in the water. But eagles soar. They use the thermals, they use the, the, the lift from underneath to pick them up. They're not able to stop in one place like a, a kite would do or maybe even a kestrel. I've never seen a kestrel or rock kestrels have the potential to but I think uh, large birds of prey they're a little bit too heavy. If they try to hover they'll stall and they'll, they'll fall. There's quite a delicate balance between the ability to stay in one place and weight and wing aspect ratio. So I've never seen an eagle hover. And they do soar, glide, and dive bomb, which is often their strategies of, of catching prey.
think that's... Is that him that landed there? Is that another bird? I think it might be him. Let's move up just slightly. I think it is him. Definitely came towards the dam. It was dropping. Yeah, it looks like him. Birds all around are not very happy. Warburg's eagles are, are very good hunters. And they have a high proportion of birds in their diet. Those reptiles and small mammals. They will feed on insects though. Speaking about reptiles, early on in the show, well, Hand and I were driving along, we had a slithering, slithering across the road. And it was a nice black mamba. Black mamba was a, a very brief visual. and Panda didn't really react, but uh, and Paul would have uh, had a bit of a moment, wouldn't he? Mike, yes, these are regarded as true eagles because of the feathers all the way down to the foot, down to the talon. And uh, they are the smallest of the true eagles. Even though the genus name is not Aquila. It used to be Aquila Warburgii. It's been changed to Hariatus. I'm not sure exactly why. But uh, all eagles, all true eagles fall under the genus name Aquila. They are the smaller. Only up to 1 kg, 1.3 kgs. 58 centimeters tall female much larger than the male in appearance the two of them having slight differences in size which means that they don't really compete to have a different feeding ability and she spends more time on the nest and he's busy at bringing food back to and fro so him being a bit smaller is beneficial Okay, well Cedric's had the most amazing morning with the TP, let's go see if it's continuing. Thank you, Steve. -o. Yo, nice having a black mamba this morning. That is marvelous. We, have, we saw one as well the other day. Eh? When was it? It was about uh, three, days four, ago. three days ago, yeah. Three days ago, close to our camp area, Nochal. So yeah, that <laughs> and a big one. So yeah, they are uh, are about uh, at the moment, uh, especially with this heat and coming to the end of summer as well. Trying to eat as much as possible. Oh, here's a big bee. Yeah. But yeah, we are still here with the old tortoise pan, this beautiful male leopard, and he is resting nicely in the grass. And again, getting his head up, just listening out. We've had, well, we weren't live. We actually had two hyenas coming past here. Just coming to investigate. And both hyenas that came past here oof, they had big bellies. Full, full, full bellies. Oh. There's a big bee. There's a bumblebee. But yeah, they had full bellies. So I don't know where they came from. It looked like they came from the south from the little Gauri side. But no lions crossing into Juma this morning. That is interesting. I would have thought. But that's now typical. Lions are all all in the west and all of a sudden all the lepers are coming now to the east. You know, they're kind of thinking, okay, well, too much pressure uh, pressure from other bigger predators that side. Well, let's rather move into rather this side again and spend a little bit more time here, which is perfect for us. Perfect. But yes, it will be nice to see lions. Sorry, Jared, I didn't get uh, Nathan's question there. Please, can you just repeat for me? <coughs> no, Nathan and TP hasn't eaten, but he doesn't look hungry as well. Um, 
his stomach is tall a little bit, so you might have had something about a day or say a day or two ago. Um, there is a bit of a bulge on his belly there, but uh, nothing recent, nothing substantial, put it that way. But that's typical of the leopards. I mean, uh, if you find, even if he's eaten in that, and <laughs> there's something in the area, there's a little steenbok or a family of warthogs coming down to this uh, pan, you're going to see very quickly that he's going to... Uh, uh, pretty much get uh, his attention and uh, hopefully there's potential food, a potential kill in sight. And he's nicely covered here. So this is that's a perfect place. So the warthogs come from the east towards his pan. He's got perfect, perfect cover. So you never know. Maybe this uh, this afternoon we come here and. Uh, we can get him again this side. Stand by there, Clayton. No changes. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. Oh, there's three of them. Hello, boys. What are you feeding on now? That looks like a leadwood from here. Let's have a look. Yes, it is. It's a young leadwood. Three boys. One of them yesterday was very dark. We had four. One was a very tall, dark and handsome giraffe.
you see this no one can compete with that feeding height that depth into the bush they can feed the height here certainly and um, they have done so I've seen probably three baby giraffe in trees in my life and there's no other animal I could have gotten it there I've never seen a leopard kill a giraffe baby giraffe but having baby giraffe up trees is evidence that it did happen I mean, a baby giraffe is, is is little but it's heavy but it's not the heaviest animal that leopards could go for it weighs about a hundred kilograms so yeah it is it's probably on the spectrum but generally you'd only find a male giraffe would even attempt a male leopard would even attempt it no babies here not amongst these four boys or three boys currently It's going to be a warm day. I can feel it's warming up nicely already. Joanne, they are savannah dwelling species. So they only occur in the savannah biome. Obviously, we do find them down in the Eastern Cape. The thicket biome was once upon a time called the pseudo savanna. So now they do occur in the thicket, but once upon a time they were believed to be the same biome. Just the, the thicket is far more diverse, many different types. You get the dry and the, the wet thicket, very succulent and spiny thicket. And so giraffe do occur there. But you'll notice when you do find them in the thicket biome, they stick to the the acacia karoo, the sweet thorn areas, which are very much a savanna type of tree. You can say the acacia tree and the giraffe have evolved side by side. So nice to see giraffe boys on the property. Jav Bunny is so calming being with giraffe, you're right. Uh, very slow moving metho methodical creatures sorry Jared can you repeat what you said there I didn't quite copy everybody on the 4th of November this year for four nights I'm taking a private safari to Chitra Chitra I believe there's space for one more lady on that trip unless that's changed for more information go to the website wildearth.tv forward slash travel or send an email to travel at wildearth.tv Chitra Chitra up here in the northern Sabi Sands four nights it's going to be epic
can see they're enjoying that leadwood tree. Leadwood, they thought it was out of reach from everybody. No, not these guys. Not when you stand 18 feet. Bronham, I mean, they're very well associated with the with an acacia, and we've got a number of different species of acacia, although we, the only real acacias we find there, or the dominant acacias, are the black monkey thorn and the knob thorn, which are very similar. The red thorn and the river thorn are around as well, but they're in very low number. So I've seen them feeding on tamburti, which is in very small amounts. We've seen them now feeding on the leadwood. See them touching the guari from time to time, the bush willows. But they are high in favor of the fine leafed thorny trees buffalo thorn. Those that provide the more nutrients and the less chemicals are normally favored. prehensile lips enables them to just pluck the leaves as they see fit like your fingers a prehensile tongue as well that can come out and latch and they want to find a suitable branch they just pull it towards the mouth of the tongue and just strip it Okay, well, sounds like TP is on the move once again. Let's go catch up with them. All right, well, tortoise pan is here somewhere in this bush. He's just moved from the pan where he was lying a little bit earlier. Something grabbed his attention. And he just moved a little bit further into the thick bush here so I've got a, I've got a very slight view on him but I just see a spot yeah, it's just like standing so let's be a little bit patient here see if he's gonna make his way out uh, here he comes here he comes all right you ready then for I don't know let's see if we can, can get a nice one of him here oh he's in this green now he's going to lie there. Oh, not lie there. He's, here he comes. Oh, he's going that side. Mm. Right, he's going a little bit further away from us. <laughs> oh, la, la. Uh, all right, let's go around. You ready? Uh, we're gonna go. Are we gonna go around? Uh, oh. Yeah, he's coming out that way. Letting our other vehicle know. So I'm so sure he's going to go straight into his normal route, Little Gari, Hoffmans. It's a property that we cannot traverse in here. So this is our southern boundary at the moment. And I think this is he's going to come across here somewhere. What I'm going to do is go past this vehicle. Sorry, thank you. Hi. Right, we're just going to go a little bit up here, and I can see him there. All right, let's let's go in here. 
there it's going there, yeah. on that fire break. I'm sure my Paul's going to get him now on the screen, here he comes. Here he comes aside. Freddy, no he won't uh, challenge a female leopard, it's uh, more challenging male leopards, male against male. So he'll be very happy if he's got a female in his uh, territory, very very happy. So he won't challenge a female. That's what they want. They want females in their territories. More females the better. Spread the genes. Alright TP, you're going to go straight across there and this is going to be the last 10 seconds viewing tortoise pan for this morning. And he's going to go onto that road and going to go straight south into Hoffman's. Bye -bye. That was nice. <coughs> so, tortoise pan for the win this morning. Indeed, indeed. So, we are going to continue with our drive now and see what else we can go and see and find and experience. You never know. Um, and flies. But yeah, plenty of flies around here. Experience captivating wildlife documentaries showcasing incredible animal behavior for free by visiting lionmountain.tv or downloading the app accessible on both Apple and Android platforms. The impala can't often reach right near where the horns is just starting to push out. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, it's a little one. It's a juvenile. And it's also joining the party, waiting for somebody to feed it. Okay, it's flap its feathers. Oh, shame. <laughs> I can't get rid of them. Look at it. Look at them like they're having an argument. No, you leave me alone. I said, don't go there. Shame, little one. You might have to buck and rear to be able to get those birds off. Holding on nice and tight to your flappy fur. There she goes. She's... She's... She's hoisted. Listen. Yo. Oh, oh, get 
careful. Oh, she made it. She made it. She's just gonna make sure that thing doesn't slip. Oh my girl, you go. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. You're doing so well. Welcome back live here to Joom everyone. Sorry about any technical difficulties you may have experienced there. Sometimes broadcasting from these wild locations live comes with its challenges. Well it doesn't get more wild than seeing giraffe out in the landscape. This is one of those animals that tourists come from all over the world to see. I know we often talk about the big five and uh, those characteristic animals that you get to see but you know tourists go away very disappointed if they don't get to see a giraffe or a zebra I suppose many people could probably live without seeing a buffalo buffalo is a bonus but to not see a giraffe like this hey panda what do you think <laughs> Definitely. I mean, I know I've made this statement before, but if you've ever spent time in, at our international airport in Johannesburg, OR Tambo, and you just spend time in the international departures, you see how many people are traveling home with a wooden giraffe wrapped in cardboard or plastic or whatever they're doing. So many. <laughs> Maybe we don't see them with all the other small things because the giraffe is so obvious. It's like a long, big, long stick definitely is that one animal that people want to see. Hannah, no. No, they don't. They have uh, very clear boundaries. Um, giraffe. I mean, you can get pretty close to them. I'm not going to lie, but uh, they've got a space. They've got a flight distance. They won't let you get closer than that. They don't walk up to the car. They don't come closer to the car and have interactions like elephants do. Um, it's a very different kind of intelligence, I suppose. Uh, the giraffe views us and sees us for what we are and watches us and ascertains and then they move on. Whereas elephants I think get to know us, they get to feel us, they, they, they learn what they can and can't do and it's a very different experience. Very, very different experience. Well, they're busy chewing the cud now. They're having filled their rumen with leaf material, which they're now processing. You'll see them chewing, chewing, and it's just swallowed. Now watch the throat. There we go, back up into the mouth. There we go. It's quite an incredible thing to imagine that you've got this stomach that's filled with leaf. Now imagine you take a whole lot of leaves and you put them on into a pot of water. They all sort of sit on the top of the water. They just sit there because they're large, large surface area, they float. And the giraffe is able to accumulate a mouthful of each of those that's sitting on the top of the rumen and force it up the throat into the mouth where it then chews and chews and chews and masticates and masturates, masticates those... Uh, those particles and then when it's finished chewing them they drop down back into the room and because those particles have been finely chewed they sink and filter to the bottom then the next layer of leaves the next mouthful of leaves next mouthful of leaves until that entire top surface layer of floating broad leaves has been to the mouth covered in saliva filled and surrounded with microorganisms and then swallowed and then they go in to the bottom of the first chambered stomach where they then filter through to the next chamber where the actual absorption and breakdown of those nutrients takes place. The first chamber, the rumen, is essentially just an area of breakdown, an area of, of chopping and filtering before the actual absorption takes place in the next chamber.
DJ Lex, they are as unique as they come. So from the rumen we get the reticulum, and then the omasum, and then the abomasum before going into the intestines. So the larger particles get broken down and processed in the rumen and the smaller broken down particles get passed into the reticulum which then push them through to the omasum where final absorption takes place. Jill, all our ruminants have got the four-chambered stomach, and then our non-ruminants, as the name implies, do not. But another name for non-ruminants is hindgut fermenters, and here we list elephant, zebra, horse, warthog, rhino, and then hippo's got a very interesting system all on their own. But everything else you can think of, from the kudu to the giraffe, impala, wildebeest, buffalo, they're all regarded as ruminants and uh, they chew the cud. So any animal you find, including a goat and a cow, uh, that you see standing there with a mouth full of, of vegetation that's chewing and chewing, you never see a zebra standing there chewing. You never see an elephant standing there chewing. They're constantly ingesting food, but they never stand there just re-chewing, going over processed stuff. And uh, they both come with their benefits, they both come with their advantages. And off they go. And off into the Gwari thickets. Once again, they go. We've got a refreshing splash of entertainment this March. AfriCam is surfacing with a new show. Join us every morning and submerge yourself in nature's ambiance. Watch it live and transport yourself to the finest watering holes across Africa. Wild Earth, connecting with nature.
But yeah, as I, as I say, I think if deep, uh, Tortoise Pan and, and Mulwati, those two male leopards really get uh, into a brawl. Mm -hmm. And I really almost thought it was going to happen this morning. I really thought we were going to get that this morning. It seemed like it was very close. I think they might have just saw each other, might have just crossed paths not too long before we found uh, before we found Tortoise Pan this morning. Because the way we found Tortoise Pan, he was not happy. You know, when like you know, almost like the hairs are raised up on the on the shoulders. He was salivating. He was rrr, 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 calling. You know, all the all the signs were right there of a very upset male leopard. And then I looked and I saw other male leopard tracks there. So uh, yeah. Yvonne, yeah, no, leopard dynamics is, yeah, no, leopard dynamics is crazy. Well, it's, yes, it's tracks coming down here on top of vehicle tracks now of a male leopard. Oy, oy, oy. Mm. And it's on top of all of our vehicle tracks here. It's time. I don't want to see the time quickly. So we might have an opportunity to maybe turn around here. Yeah. Mm. So I want to quickly double check where we had the tortoise plan where we found him this morning. Because we found him coming up this road and there's tracks coming down and there's tracks going up. There's <laughs> just tracks of leopards all over here. Uh, it's difficult to see but you can see on here all those like scribbly ups, uh, I'm not going to say um, uh, uh, areas of the road itself you can see it's been disturbed by an animal and that's all leopard going up and down up and down there both ways both ways so I'm just gonna go quickly up a little bit further just to take a look oh. I can really see a lot of disturbance on this side a lot of disturbance All right, we're gonna just continue up this side just to see what else. Um, uh, so there's so much leopard tracks here. I don't even know which one to follow here. Uh, let's head over to Eric. We hope you do come right before the end of the show, Cedric. At the moment, we're sitting here with some ostriches. Looks like that same group that we saw yesterday, just minus one male. It's possible he's probably still around here somewhere, but not that we can see. Oh, it's a very upset hearted dog. And normally hear the hardy does shrieking like that. Maybe we got a fright from something. Now, obviously, the speaking of noises, oh, the hardy does making a noise there. We spoke about the noise that ostriches make yesterday, and that kind of that uh, it sounds very similar to that of the male lion making a territorial call. Uh, ostriches. Other than that, you don't really hear them making any noises, you know. They're very similar to a uh, giraffe in the sense that they stay silent majority of the time unless they actually need to make a noise. You know, most animals don't really make noises unless they are alerting you that you're getting too close. You better watch out now uh, as a warning or as a trying to scare another animal away. Like these guys, I mean, they, the ostriches will hiss at each other. And um, but I've never really heard an ostrich making any other noise other than the males doing that territorial call and that, uh, trying to attract females. And then, of course, 
the hissing. And the hissing is quite scary, actually. <laughs> I've had ostriches fighting next to a car uh, when I was in the Western Cape. And um, it, were, it, it got quite serious, you know. You know, they, they really started going at each other. Um, and uh, the hissing, it sounds very similar to that of a puff adder. And a puff adder is alerting you that you're about to step on it or you're in my area and you're getting too close. Um, and, I mean, the females, oh, they chase each other around non-stop when they hissing like that. But these guys seem to be living in harmony, not getting in the way of each other. And although we saw yesterday that one of the females may may not have been very happy with the other. The hearing is not bad. It's not bad at all. Um, I wouldn't say it's it's immaculate, you know, but their hearing, their hearing is what it needs to be. You know, when you're out here in the wild, you you got to have some form of 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 good hearing. Otherwise, you know, you will struggle to survive. So, <laughs> my dad always speaks about. You know, the survival of the fittest. If they were blind, they died. If they were deaf, they died. Um, you know, out here in the wild, if you can't run very, very fast at all, you will be caught. So naturally, there are no slow antelopes because the lions have eaten them all. And there are no antelopes they can't hear very well because the lions have all eaten them. Uh, you know, m m Mother Nature sort of eliminates those, not the disabilities, but those who just don't have that extra ability to listen or to hear or to see or to taste. If you can't taste that something's poisonous. Mm. on safari. Now remember, this is live and interactive, so we'd love to hear from you. To be having these incredible experiences in this wild underwater forest. It, it was just one of those things which I don't think I'll ever see again in my life. Thanks for joining us on our sunrise safari.
nice. We've got the gentle giants of the bush. Some nice elephants. Yeah, busy feeding around here. Hey, my girl. And we've got one or two uh, on the right hand side as well. Well, not one or two, actually, we've got about five, six of them on the right. It's a nice, uh, nice breeding herd. Big female to us, to our right. The one that we've got in frame at the moment. You can see flapping the ears. It is going to be quite a hot day today, so I'm sure these elephants will slowly but surely start making their way to some of the dams or pans or mud wallows. Nice and cool for the afternoon. I was actually hoping they were going to go to this little pan here. We had Galago Pan at the moment. There's a nice little pan that serves to the south of us. Uh, let's see what the general direction is going to be. I see some is already moving to the pan. I think let's go around uh, the pool. Thank you. Gonna go around, just gonna go to the pan. I think some of them are gonna go for a drink. Yes, a nice little drink. Don't worry, we all we're all good, we all yeah, we're gonna be just keeping our distance from you. No worries. And they love clean water, so they will pick up on that clean water very quickly. And this pan has got just nice clean water here. Up. Here we go. Look at that. We've got two of the youngsters coming through first. That one at the back has got nice tusks on it, but it's going a different direction, weird directions. You can see they're actually going out. The two, both of the tusks is actually going outwards, and not going like the typical first straight and then start curling up. They're going pretty much to the sides. Hannah, yes, time with elephants. Oh, you've got to spend time with elephants. They are such beautiful animals. <laughs> Look at these two. Hey, move on. Oh, there's a little bit of a, a shove. That's not nice. He's <laughs> shoving the other one. I just want to have a drink. Leave me alone. <laughs> there we go. Go to the other side. There's more than, more than enough space for both of you. No, he doesn't want to leave it alone. <laughs> Derek, do you know, I think animals have a sense of humor? I think so, for sure. No, I think they've got a fantastic sense of humor. Elephants, oh yes. I think, you know, many a time you'll find they know that they're irritating the other one, especially when they go and swim in the dams and that. You can just see they all pick on one, you know, and it's on an individual and it almost seems like it's uh, like a joke to them. And yes, I think it's, uh, I think animals have got a sense of humor to a certain extent. Enjoying this clean water that's inside of this little. So this little pan that's just be uh, just north of our camp is pumped with uh, borehole water. So borehole water comes in there. So especially on on uh, very dry seasons, we'll try and just uh, accommodate them with uh, one or two little water holes. That's that we do pump water into. So, and not just us, but that's through the entire Greater Kruger National Park. So I hide it in the uh, in the area. On 
just going to sit back and just enjoy a little bit of quietness and silence and just enjoy nature. <laughs> oh, the little one. That, this youngster decided to throw a little bit of a tantrum. It's like, okay, now let me just move on. I'm waiting for the rest of the herd. I'm hoping that they're going to follow you as well. And as I come down for a drink, but it doesn't seem like it. It seems like they're going further away. And they pick up the water and they actually just squirt it out for no, no, for no reason. Just, let me just play around with the water. <laughs> can you hear it? Actually, you can hear uh, old Gert in the in the distance there, busy grinding away. So what he's busy doing is preparing the new vehicles. So he's been working tiresome on those vehicles, day in and day out. So you see the uh, bit of grinding in the background. Well, that is Gert grinding away. I'm sure we are all excited seeing the new vehicles coming into play very soon. Yes, it's going to be fantastic. But it's also going to be sad for Rusty and Wendy. Oh yes, oh yes, definitely. It's going to be a sad send-off. Do you, uh, <coughs> you like their leg movement? It looks like a mini ballet. Yeah, sometimes just scratching their legs, <laughs> like <laughs> rocking back and forth, always just thinking. That's when there's sometimes, it's like a leopard, when a leopard does that with the tip of the tail from like side to side, always that movement. It's like a little bit of, you know, that there's a thought process that's going through there. Uh, sometimes with elephants as well, when they get those foot, front foot rocking back and forth, it's like, hmm. Just thinking. There we go. Got some nice clean water in. Looks like it's all good to go. Okay, let me come and get this out of the us, maybe. Don't worry, we've been here for a while. <laughs> yes. And gone. Bye-bye. All right, that was fantastic. That was nice to see. So, oh, and all those other ones went further into the thicket, so I'm not going to go and try and chase after them. I think what we were going to do, we're going to slowly go past the dam area and go see what we can find, what else we can find for the rest of our sunrise safari. It's been wonderful. What a drive. What a drive. What a drive. Also, make sure you look at the dam cam today because the Juma dam cam, uh, that other male leopard tracks came into this area.
Anneli, nothing better than an elephant full of mischief. Oh yes, nothing better. It is, it's always quite entertaining. When they're full of mischief like that, it's always entertaining. I agree, there's nothing better. Interesting clouds that's building up that side, but they don't predict rain today. Hmm. Well, the sun is gone now. Out in the wild, life moves fast. To capture the action, you've got to be in the right spot at the wrong time. Now, incredible animal behavior, selected from amazing amateur and professional footage to reveal the secret lives of animals in motion. This is raw nature caught in the act. Well, while we were looking at that hyena before, um, a battalier came from quite far. It was calling and calling and calling and calling. I mean, I've heard battaliers call, do that very chicken like crow, but this one was just making so much noise, but it was too quick to put on camera. And the battalier nest is here, they're not here though. Sure, I've never seen a battalier do that before. It was a female. Calling, calling, calling. Maybe there was a predator coming close to their nest and she spotted it. She came to investigate. That's the only thing that I could I could suspect. Right, so here we have our pig's ear. And what we're looking at is a flower. And that's the part that grows this beautiful reddish-orange color. 
and it's got a very long stalk. And they generally have multiple flowers. And along this long stalk, we'll eventually get to the leaves. Where all the good stuff is stored. Have a close look down. This one is not in the best of condition, as it is also slowly perishing. And that would uh, explain all the brown marks and the sort of crumpled leaves. It's not as, it definitely doesn't hold as much moisture as it used to. And that's why it almost, it doesn't look sad, it just looks. Uh, I suppose it does look a little bit sad. No, no, you can't eat it. Um, yeah, pig's ear is not something that is consumable to humans, and it is something that actually needs to be uh, uh, watched in the presence of dogs, because it well. If a dog were to chew or to nibble or to just have a little bit of the, 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 the sap inside the plant get on the dog, it will irritate the skin. It could also cause the dog to, um, to start vom vomiting and could give it also a bit of diarrhea. So it is toxic to dogs, but as Steve says, it also helps with uh, warts. So those leaves here, you can just, you basically peel that layer of skin off, that thick, it's fairly thickish skin, almost like leather, and you peel that off, and then you place that on top of the wart, and it generally will make the wart soft, um, soft and somewhat removable, and then you can almost take a knife and you can scrape the wart off. It has much the same values, well, similar values, as that of the aloe, or the bitter aloe. Which is also good for, well, maybe not good for wars, but good for wounds. And they grow fairly big, you know, they can have, like, I mean, you've seen this long stalk where the flowers are attached to it, they can have sometimes six or seven of those. They tend to stick to fairly shrubbed areas where they can be protected, not always out in the open, but can be found in the open. Jasmine definitely eating it. Um, like I said, I spoke about uh, my experience in the Western Cape with Klipspringer, which is a rock hopper. It's a small antelope, uh, almost very similar to mountain goats, where they were consuming milkweed in, almost, in, 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 a, in a way to kind of counteract any stomach bugs or any insects inside the stomach that were causing unease or problems. Uh, elephants will consume a specific toxic plants in order to also eliminate any unwanted critters or stomach bugs within. So people who tend to go after elephant poo and squeeze out all the liquids um, to drink, which is perfectly fine, you can do that if you push if, if if you are in the need for water and you are stranded but at the same time you have to keep in mind that elephants do consume sometimes toxic things not all the time it's definitely not all the time but sometimes and uh, yes if it's toxic for them obviously because they're a big elephant it takes a lot of it to kill them but a little bit for us and it could be the very end of your life. Now, 
as flower. Um, I mean, it's still pretty much green, so I don't think it's been losing condition for very, very long, I'd say. In the last two weeks, this has happened. And it's possibly also due to the heat that we've had and the lack of water. It could very possibly be that. I don't think it is. We are going to send you over to Cedric, who is at a water hole after our botany class. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, we had Gary Dam. I just got an update now, but this is going to be for this afternoon. Um, apparently, the Nkuhuma pride of lions have just been chased onto Juma, uh, quite far from where we are now. We won't be able to get there. We don't have the time now. But they've come onto Juma, and they're coming east. So there is the pride of lions, the Nkuhuma, the entire Nkuhuma pride that's going to be around for this afternoon. Yeah! <laughs> I'm so happy, and I'm sure Steve as well. So I think Steve and myself shall chat uh, during today and to see if we're going to or well, we are going to follow up for sure. But apparently they are still moving this way. So yes, they're on, in, they're on Juma. I am so happy. So that's for a good thing for this afternoon. But a little bit of a sadder note on that. Uh, as on the screen, we've got the lonesome little gosling all by itself, no parents around, as you can see, sitting on the side of the water there. And this was also just walking along the bank here by itself. So, that is sad. I don't know where the the parents are, because they usually always stick very close to to the youngsters, to the young chick, and uh, it's all by itself. And then that that's could be so vulnerable like this, because a bird of a bird of prey could come here, um, even a, a Nile monitor, a snake, something like that could easily come along here and grab that poor little gosling. Because remember, they can't fly yet at this age. The only way to get away is to try and maybe get, go into the water and try and swim away from potential danger. Oh, can you see it there? So it's on the side. You'll see that white speck. You can't see it. There's a little white, little white bird. There you go. There you go. I just almost wanted to stand up there. And I'm looking around here and I can't see the adults. I cannot see the Egyptian geese at all, the two adults, mom and dad. Oh. Anyway, let's just cross fingers that uh, this little one stays safe today. No, Vicky, not at all. Hippos do not eat meat. Vicky, hippos eat grass, and I've seen, I've actually seen a little, there at Biffleshook Dam the other day, yeah, we saw actually a little gosling swimming right past the hippo, without the hippo even worrying, you know, and uh, it practically went like 30 centimeters past the hippo's head, and that big hippo like just watched it go by. So yeah, they don't have to worry about the hippos. Oh, bird activity, uh, there's just a lot of chirpy chirpies here, above us here, here in this uh, jackalberry tree. Lovely. But also keep your eyes peeled on this dam today. Um, we had the leopard tracks actually coming towards, from when we left the elephants coming down towards the dam. Leopard tracks all on top of vehicle tracks or male leopard coming towards the dam area. So keep your eyes peeled. You never know, you might have that male leopard making an appearance during today. But yeah, oh, what a wonderful, wonderful drive. And I think I can't wait for this afternoon now. I think this afternoon has got a lot of potential to it. Hannah, yes, no, thank you so much for joining us. And as I say, I can't wait for this afternoon's uh, uh, sunset safari. And I think uh, what a great drive we had so far this morning. And I'm sure, as I said, Steve and myself 
we're going to pretty much chat about uh, those Nkurumas during today to see where we can follow up on those uh, lions and you can imagine having the entire Nkuruma pride this afternoon. Oh my word, it's going to be wonderful, wonderful. So yes, I'm looking forward to that. But uh, for now, we are just going to sit here at Gary Dam, enjoy the last uh, view of uh, the dam and, uh, and uh, of course the hippopotamus that's just kind of exposing a little bit more of his body out the water now. But yeah, thanks so much for all the comments and all the questions this morning. I uh, really do appreciate it. I'm hoping that we could answer as many as, we, as possible. Uh, please make sure to join us again this afternoon for the start of On Safari, our highlight show that will be at 3 o'clock and then our sunset safari at 3.30 p.m. Central African time. And we will be seeing you out there this afternoon. From the Wild Earth team, thank you, thank you. Obrigado, donkey. Have a wonderful day further. Bye-bye.